Hello friends and welcome to Roar Church Texarkana. If you want more information about anything that we do, go to jojodawson.net. You can find our YouTube videos, our blogs, where to sow, how to partner with us, any of that information. We hope that you enjoy this message. So today, for the one year anniversary, I, I was just saying, God, give me a word. I want to share something good and special. When I say he gave me a word, it was like this. There you go. And it was like a five minute, got it. It wasn't, it was just, and so this is what we're going to call today, Voices That Roar. And, you know, there's a, a lot of, of good churches in Texarkana that a lot of people could go to, but hopefully by the leading of the Lord, you're here. And we are going to make sure that your voice is one that is loud and that it roars. You know, so many people in life, they struggle with so many things in life, but all they actually struggle with is not saying yes to God. This is your yes. This is your yes to God moment. And I have been on a journey for many years, my wife and I both. And even before I met my, my wife, to, to, to just run after God. It is the funnest thing, the greatest thing you could ever have. So quit running, quit fighting, and, and let your voice be heard. Every, and, and the thing is, your voice may be in parenting. Your, your loudest voice may be in your marriage. It may be at your workplace. It may be in your family. It may be behind a pulpit. may be behind a microphone singing. may be behind a guitar. Who knows? It may be behind a race car one day. You have no idea. You may go into politics. You have no idea how your voice is going to be heard. But I promise you, you have a voice. Amen? So let, let's get into this. I want to I talk about two men... They were born in 1758, and they died about the same time as well. One of them's name was Jonathan Edwards, and after he was born in 1758, excuse me, died in 1758, 150 years after his life, this is what happened out of his descendants, okay? So after his death, 150 years after his death, this is what happened out of his descendants, 14 became college presidents, 100 became college professors, 60 became doctors, 100 became lawyers, 30 became judges, 3 senators, 1 vice president, 100 pastors, and 60 authors. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good job, Jonathan. Now, Matt Jutes was born, died about the same time, 150 years ending in 1906. This is what he did. He caused the state of New York... $12 million, and $12 million was a lot to a state in 1906. He caused the state of New York $12 million. 300 people in his family over those 150 years were in poverty. 150 criminals. There was 100 recorded drunks, 7 murderers, and half of the females were mm, ladies of the night. So, that is what he did. And you say, well, that's just one person. But what did one man do in the good and what did one man do in the bad? And you say, well, I don't have a voice. Who said? Who said you don't have a voice? Who said your life does not matter? You know, you have no idea who your children are. You have no idea who your kid is. You have no idea what they're going to become. You don't know what doors God is going to swing wide open for them because the values you've put inside of them, you have no idea what God is about to do in them and through them. My, my mom, she told me the other day, she said, you know, when I was praying for you when I was little, I just prayed that you wouldn't go to the clubs when you got older. And uh, she said, I never prayed you'd be a preacher. Who would have thought it? I said, not me. She said, you me neither. But you're there. You know, you have no idea what your kids going to do. You have no idea what you're going to do in a year. My, my dream in life was to be a professional rodeo star. I didn't want anything to do with the church, much less preach. Who knew? But God. You know, this is when you start walking in the spirit, you find out that you have a voice. A lot of you, you're just trying to, to make a living. You're just trying to provide, which is good, but God is wanting to give you a life. He doesn't want to just give you a living. He wants to give you a life, and he wants you to have that life and life more abundantly. Galatians 5 and 16, it says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and they are contrary to one another. So let me just ask you this. Are you walking in the flesh or the Spirit? There's no middle ground. Are you walking in the flesh in your life, or are you in 
the Spirit. If you are in the Spirit, your voice is going to be heard. If you're in the flesh, guess what? Your voice is going to be heard. It is going to be heard. You know, we can get, I, let me go back to kids' church and ask. Don't ask my kids. Sometimes I mean, well, dad might get mad. When I'm in the flesh, they will, I will act different than when I am in the Spirit. But what I want to do as a husband and a father is I want to live my life more in the Spirit. Because here is the thing. The louder that my voice gets in life with what I do for myself, the more advantages my kids will have. I don't want my kids to have to plow and push as hard as I did in certain areas, but I want to be able to make things easier for them. I want my kids to understand the kingdom mindset and what God is wanting to do and to have the full knowledge of the scriptures all the days of their life so they don't have to go through school and life wondering about the Bible because I'm going to teach them. They're going to know the word of God and they're going to know that they have a voice. I try to, I try to identify the gifts in my kids at a young age so I can teach them how to walk in their gifts instead of being oh, 41 years old and somebody saying, this is who you really are. And I'm like, oh, oh, well, that makes sense. So for 41 years, what was I doing? Everything wrong because I didn't know any better. And nobody around me knew any better either. Y'all got me? You, you got to teach people around you. Your voice can speak into them. All right, let's, let's get on. You know, you have to make the path of the Spirit the place to where you live and walk. Because if you do, you will get comfortable in the Spirit. And it won't be like, oh, God, speak to me. Oh, God, show me the way to go. No, no, you're going to walk with Him. You're going to talk with Him. You're going to know the ways to go. And it is going to be peaceful when you live in that. When you got to make a big decision, you don't worry and have to fret over knowing. You're just going to know God because you're in close with Him. You're walking close with Him. And this is a place that we should live, dwelling in the place with God. And you do that early in the morning. You do that late at night. And you grow in a strong relationship with him. You know, 1 Corinthians 2.9. As it is written, I has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor entered into the heart of the man that things that God has prepared for those who love them. I'm telling you, where you are right now in your life, you cannot imagine what God has for you. Now let me give it to you like this. The world's changing fast. I mean, this world is changing so fast. You have a voice, and the way that you think your voice is going to be heard is going to be different than the way you think it's going to be heard. Does that make sense? So many times people want to do something, and a year later, the way they have to communicate their voice is completely different. I know so many people who are called to preach, and they think they got to be behind a pulpit. I know um, some ladies who prophesy amazing ministries, big ministries online, and they said they've never held a microphone in their hand. How is that? Because they get behind a phone. It's the way that they communicate. The way that God is going to advance you is going to blow your mind away because you can't even fathom. That's what I just said. The things which God has prepared for those who love them. You know, you can't even imagine how he's going to use you, but he's going to. Amen? We got to raise up from Jonathan Edwards. No, no, no. Oh, crazy Matt Jutes, who's just crazy, y'all. Fifteen times in the New Testament, the Bible says, those that have ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. How many people truly hear? If you hear, you know what to say. Your voice is loud when you know how to hear. I'm telling you, this is a day that it's like anybody who hears what God is saying, he's going to put a megaphone right in front of your mouth. And what you say, it's just going to come out. I'm just going to give you this prophetically, there is an acceleration of God coming on people right now who have positioned their self to move forward. You, you better buckle up in life. It's going to go. If God told you to go to work at a place, get ready. You might be running the joint before long. You know, whatever he has told you to step into, you are going to get advancement. Favor is going to come upon your life like you have never seen before. It's not going to make any sense. Just receive it and go for the things of the Lord. And I tell you like this, Jeff and Michelle came over the other night for a brainstorming night. We had a short session. It was only about three hours. But we were brainstorming and talking, and I never can figure out how to get eBooks out. And I'm like, I want to do eBooks. I've been wanting to do eBooks for a hot minute, probably like two years. And then all of a sudden, we just sat down and talked, and it came out. We're going to have one every month for eight months starting in September. Well, how did I would try and labor for things to happen? Oh, I got some more I'm writing too. Um, I'm writing some more. So it's going to be 10 or 12. It might be one a month forever. And, and so we were sitting there 
We're sitting there, and I was like, God, how did I for years just try to figure it out, figure it out, and then all of a sudden it just came out, and one right after another. Because it's time. I'm talking to you, nobody else but just you. That's everybody. It's just time for you. It's your time. Quit saying, God, is it time? Yes, yes it is. It's your time to start. It's time to do. It is time to go. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Amos 3 and 12. Thus said the Lord, as a shepherd takes from the mouth of a lion two legs or a piece of ear to show the children of Israel to be taken out. So this is what's happening. If you are a shepherd over a flock and the Lord says, how come this lamb died? You better go up and you better show I have an ear, I have a leg, I fought for this one. Here's what happened back in the day. If you were a shepherd over a flock and you took 100 sheep out and you came home with 99, the guy who owned the sheep, this is what he would say, I'm taking that sheep out of your wages unless you can show me you fought. I do, brother. I got a leg. As he was getting devoured, I was pulling, and I came back with the leg. What does that mean? He fought for that one. Or if he, if he ate them from the other end first, he had a nose. He had an ear. Hey, this is Fifi right here. It's all that's left of Fifi. But I got an ear. I fought for Fifi. But Fifi gone. But don't take it out of my wages because I fought. See, what, what happens is you're going to be responsible for what God has given you to do. You're going to have to be say, God, you know, I, I tried. You know, God, you know, people say this all the time. God gave me this job, but they did something. I just left. Did God tell you to leave? No. Maybe he wanted you there because the area that it was in was a rough area. What do you think he was going to put you in a field of tulips? No. He, he, he put you in a field where there's a bunch of heathenistic sinners for you to win them to the Lord. You know, people say this all the time. Well, God gave me my, my husband. God gave me my wife. But then the devil took over and then I left. Did God say leave? No. Then why'd you leave? You know, God, you know, people will push your kids out prematurely. People will end a friendship prematurely. Did God say, do it? no, you better fight for that friendship. That, that friend that was there one day, they got crazy for a minute. Why don't you be there for them? You got to learn to fight for some things. You got to say, Lord, you know, I mean, there's times in my life God has got on to me. You ever get in trouble from God? I mean, it's not like fun. And, and it's like you, you don't have a leg or an ear to show. You didn't fight for this friendship. You, you didn't fight for this relationship. I brought that guy into your life for you to minister to him. And all you were wondering, Joe, was how could you benefit from that relationship? Oh, me. You know, but, but now I'm like, God, everything that we fight for, there's people that's supposed to be in church right now in here. But you know what? They're out in the world. They had way too much night last night probably. But I'm still fighting for them. When the Lord brings them onto my heart, I'm like, God, I got a leg. I'm, I'm fighting for them, Lord. I'm praying. I'm, I'm speaking into their life. Why am I saying this? Because at the one-year anniversary moving forward, you got to understand you've got a voice. And, and a lot of times this is, this is where we mess up. How, how can, you know, when, like when I call my apostle, I never ask him, how can I move forward in some things? I give him my plans, and he says, I like that. Quit looking for everybody to promote you. God's going to give you wisdom. I tell people all the time, don't look for a blueprint. You move forward. God's going to give you the blueprint. This is a season that God is about to move things forward in. Let me just give it to you like this. Y'all ready for this? 30 years ago, some of y'all ain't hear me 30 years ago. Y'all ain't even 30. But they had TV, 3, 6, and 12. Woo, we got 33 then, y'all. Hang on, four channels. But then things started rolling with cable, and everything was big like that. But then all of a sudden, now how's the world changed with stations and YouTube and all of this stuff? It is now more individuals producing things versus three or four bigger things. It's like that also in what God is doing. He is instead just getting big ministries to do things. He's calling different ministries to do dance training, to do daddy's girls, to do worship things, to do so many different things. And he's calling individuals to do things, but then also to come together in a corporate body. And it's just not one big channel, three, six, 12, boom, 33. It's a bunch of individuals taking ownership of their calling and and moving forward in it. There are more channels to use in resources for the things of God. I mean, social media is crazy how you can use that. There are more avenues to do what you're called to do. And what are you going to do with it? Don't say you ain't got a voice. You got seven social media forms. You got some way to get your voice out there. I use all seven of them all the time. I'm always on there just doing something. But you've got to get your voice out there. First John 3.16 
This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid his life down for us, and we are to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And I'm asking you, what are you doing? How are you laying your life down for people? You know, one of my favorite things about when I'm here on Sundays is when I see the different people and I say, how was your week? What did you move forward in? How are you, how are you moving? How are you shaking? Because I pray for you. And listen to me, when I pray for you, I expect a return. I got, this is what I love about some of our intercessors. They say, we like praying for you. I'm like, good. And they're like, because we get a return on our efforts. And, and it's so funny. Sometimes I got to tell some of my intercessors, I know y'all love me, but on, when I'm doing a video on social media, can you kind of st- just settle down? You're getting too wild, girl. But, but, but it's like they say when I pray for you, we're seeing a return. I want to s- preach to you on, 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 on Sunday and see you take a step forward next week and keep moving forward. I want to see restoration in, in, in your life, in your health, in your marriage, in your finances, in your dreams. I, I want to see that happen. I want to see, is it going out? I could talk loud without it. But, you know, um, I just, there's so many things that you've got to move forward in. You know, many times when people quit their jobs, when they go bankrupt, when they lose their spouse and all this other stuff, all it was is they went complacent in their life. They went complacent. And then all of a sudden they wanted to take a step up and want something new. When you, when you keep going hard after the things of God, your voice is going to get louder. Your voice is going to get louder. Ooh, this new microphone made my voice louder too. You know, you just go louder and louder. You, you, you're going to start at, at a position as a janitor, and then all of a sudden you're going to come up to your running the place because your voice is going to get louder. Your voice is going to get louder. You, you're, you're going to launch a business, and, and you're going to be the low person down here in a region, but then you're going to keep doing that business in the favor of God is going to make your voice louder and louder. See, and how do you do that? God is looking for somebody that he can promote. In Luke 9, 23, it says, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. But a lot of times we don't want to die. We want to do what we want to do. Therefore, we get complacent. Therefore, we get entangled in sin. I'm telling you, when you die to the flesh, when you die to the flesh, I was telling a young person, young teenager, wanting to make a difference in the world. And I said, this is a big call that you're wanting to step into. And when you're wanting to do what you're wanting to do, the, the, the world, some of it's going to approve and some isn't. But you got to make sure that when you do what you're called to do and what you want to do at a very young age, I'm telling you, you're going to have to do it for the right reason or, or, or it's not going to work. You have to understand everything that you do is to benefit the kingdom of God. Your marriage is to benefit the kingdom. Your business is supposed to benefit the kingdom. We got to get our mind off of ourself or you, or you can be like Jacob and Esau. Two brothers are fighting over a birthright. Genesis 25, 29 through 34. Then Jacob cooked a stew and Esau came in from the field and was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please give me some of that red stew for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, show me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, look, I'm about to die. What good is my birthright to me? you got to understand, Esau came in from the field. Jacob went away from the house and cooked some red stew. Esau could have came in and walked right past Jacob and kept walking into the house. He had more servants than he knew what to do with. They could have cooked. But all of a sudden, for some instant gratification, just a little quick moment, he gave away everything that he had. And they went into bigger turmoil for more years. Sometimes if you can just walk past that, 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 that physical, oh, I, I need this, I need that, oh, I need a little comfort, I need whatever, whatever. If you can keep going a little bit further, God's going to take care of you. Because, see, he already provided Esau with servants in the house that would cook for him, but he wanted something right then. And Jacob, listen, the one closest to him knew his weakness. Sometimes you've allowed people in your life that knows your weakness, and they will pull on your heartstrings every time just to keep you pulled back. They will use you and pull you back when they need what you got. A lot of times, do you know why you ain't got any further in your life? Glad you asked. It's because that every time you get up somewhere, one of your Jacobs will pull you back and take what you have. That's why, that's why you work, and, and they're going to take from you. I got this one guy. I really like this guy. I was talking to him. He doesn't go to church at all. Um, but, but I was talking to him one day, and I said, man, you got about four people just sucking you dry. He said, yeah, but this, yeah, but that. I said, you got to cut them jokers off. You could have so much in life, but you're allowing them to steal. 
Therefore, they, they, he's always working, and they silence his voice for what he's called to do. Is that making sense to anybody? I sure hope so. We're going to skip all that. You know, I, I love this in 2 Samuel 23, 8 through 12. This is talking about King David's mighty men, and, and this is going to really help somebody. These are the names of the mighty men of David, and after all of them, there was one named Shama. And the Philistines gathered together in a troop. Do you know how many a troop is? A lot. And it said, and they were going after a piece of ground full of lentils. So the people fled the Philistines. But he stationed himself in the middle of the field. And here, here's what happened. King David said, Shama, I want you to get right in the middle of this field. This is our field. Now, what is it lentils for? It's to eat. They're full of protein. And so the, 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 they got this lentil field. But then also what they don't eat, they barter off for, for cattle and, and, you know, whatever clothing and, and tools and whatever. So it's a very important field. So Shama got in the field, and the Bible says that a group of Philistines, which means a lot, came over the hill and came running at him. Shama and all of his mighty men were there. As the Philistines came, all the men left. They were not mighty men. The Bible says David called Shama one of his mighty men. Shama just had men. Does that make sense? I'm speaking to the mighty men, the mighty women that have a voice that want to roar. Because 10,000 will leave you on one side. 10,000 will leave you on this side. But that does not mean you are able to follow the crowd. I'm talking to the ones that have a voice that want to stand up. I don't care if everybody leaves you, you will do what you're called to do. Everybody can leave me and I will still be standing and doing what I am called to do. So they all left and Shama said, well, Lord, it's just you and me. And God's like, oh, that's how I wanted it anyway. And so they all left, and he defeated the whole troop by himself. How in the world can one man stand? You ready for this? Because he knew he was not fighting for himself. See, when you get your eyes off of yourself, you know, I got this picture in my house. And it's a picture of my wife and my three kids. And I wrote over, this is my why. And that's why I do what I do. Of course, for the Lord, too. But when you get your eyes off of you, and you'll know why you do what you do, you'll never back up another day in your life. You'll never entangle yourself in sin. You, you will say, God, I know you've called me, and then the people around me will benefit from it. The other men that were standing by Shama, they were cowards, and they ran. You know what? They were standing in there, and they were going to fight for their wife and all of their kids, but they fled. I'm telling you, there are some people in here with, with, with a loud voice Quit running. Quit running away. Be like Shama and stand in the field. And the Bible says that all this troop of Philistines came and Shama defeated every one of them by the strength of the Lord. You are so strong and you've got so much power. When you pray, you have a breakthrough anointing. There is a power on you to pray and break through anything. Quit running. I'm just telling you, quit running. You know, I had a a thought the other day about a lion. When a lion comes to eat something, like a, like a little goat or something, the lion doesn't go up and go, hmm, fall down, hmm, die. No, dude's hungry. He's about to go. He's about to growl. He's about to roar. He's about to devour. And then he's going to call everybody else to come on. Who are you fighting for? Who are you moving for? Or did you get sick and tired of hearing about crime in Texarkana? Uh, about all of this. This is craziness in, in Texarkana. It's time that we fight for something. See, Shama had a passion. He found something to stand for. He found something worth dying for. That's why it was so powerful, because he had a voice, and his voice w w was to be used. His voice was a weapon. His voice, he fought for everybody, and when it was over, he didn't worry about everybody who left because he was the one called. What are you called to do, and why aren't you standing this is one of my favorite non-biblical stories. I've shared this so many times, but act like you've never heard it. It's about John Wesley. John Wesley was called to preach. And when God told him to go to a geographical location, he would not leave that geographical location until he completed his task. Now, this is what happened. On May the 5th, he preached at St. Anne's Church. And after he preached the truth of the kingdom, he was asked to never come back. So Sunday night, he preached at St. John's Church, and the deacons told him to get out, stay out, and never come back. May the 12th, in the a.m. service, he preached at St. Jude's Church, and he was asked to never come back there either. Sunday, May 12th, on the p.m., he preached at St. George's Church. He's running out of names, y'all. And he got kicked out of that church. On Sunday, May 19th, he preached at St. Somebody Else's Church, 
in a, in a special meeting after service, they removed him and did not give him an honorarium and asked him to never come back. On May 19th, in the PM service, he was kicked out on the street after he preached. May 26th, he preached in a field because no church would let him preach, and the owner of the field turned a bull out on the meeting and destroyed the meeting. On June the 2nd, in the AM service, he preached on the edge of town because God called him to that city, and a lynch mob kicked him out of town. June 2nd, the PM service, he preached in a pasture right on the other side of the city limit sign, and 10,000 people came to hear him preach. The church world said, we don't want what you have to offer because you're messing with our geographical location. The religious culture pushed him out, but he said, I can get kicked out of nine churches in a row, but that tenth time I preached, I know somebody's going to show up. And 10,000 people came because they saw the anointing on his life. They felt the power in his word. So let me tell you this. I don't care what you're doing. Your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, everybody will tell you, don't do it. Your coworker, your friends will don't do it. But what is that voice inside of you saying? What is the Lord saying? saying for you to do. You got to find that inner thing that God has called you to when God tells you to step out and do something. And if the enemy's not fighting you, it's probably not from God. Because if you do what God's called you to, you're going to get fought all the time. Amen. You know, no, John Maxwell says this, you know, you're never down, but you're always up or you're getting up. And the enemy will always try to come at you. Now I want to talk to you about a few people that their voices have been heard. William Burns, I love this. His mom went in his room one day. He was from Scotland. His mom went in his room one day and said, Hey, William, breakfast is ready. She looked at his bed, and his bed was still made. And she looked on the floor, and he was on the floor. She said, William, get up. He got up and said, Hey, Mom, guess what God gave me? She said, What? He goes, Scotland, and went and ate breakfast. They said right after that, Scotland broke out in a mighty move of God. Because one man said, You know, I'm going to pray. I'm going to declare it. I'm going to pray. And God's going to give me my nation. I don't think you realize how much favor you have with God. I love Matthew 18, 18 and 20. It says, Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Do you get that? If two people pray, it's going to happen, basically is what that says. You know, in James, you do not have because you don't ask God. When you get before God and say, God, I don't want to pray out of the flesh. I want to pray out of the Spirit. He will fill your heart with things to pray, and they'll start to happen. That's why, you ready, intercessors are good to have. Because intercessors are the ones that will agree with you and have the power to see some things happen. Some of you are praying by yourself. Get you a prayer partner. Get you some intercessors and watch things happen. First Chronicles 28 and 9. If you seek him, you will find him. If you seek him, you will be found by him. This is it, guys. When you start praying, you better believe. When you pray for something, start acting as if it already happened. And listen, people are like, okay, God, I prayed and I'm going to wait for it to happen. No, no, no. You got to get ready. You got to get ready. I mean, I tell people all the time, this is a silly illustration, but if you're praying for a new car and uh, you, you don't build you a garage and you get you a new car and then a hell store comes, you're going to have a new car with hell damage. But what if you get ready to build something? When, when, when God told me to, to start doing all these different ministries, I build a website months before I launch it. Right, Jeff? You know, it says, whenever I get a vision, like when God told my wife to do something recently, um, she told three people she was going to do it to hold her accountable. You know, you got to understand when, when God tells you to do something, you got to step on it. You got to step out and you got to start moving because you, your voice is about to be heard. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you. Some of you have a voice inside of you that is about to roar, but you're still setting back on it. You know God has called you to do something. Start moving on it today. Nothing of lasting value will ever be accomplished without prayer. You have got to become a person of prayer. I remember when I started traveling in, in traveling in ministry, there was two other guys that started traveling at the same time. And about three months in, 
Both of them at different times said, dude, you got to learn to get out of the prayer room and you got to start shaking the bushes. I said, what is shaking the bushes? And they said, you got to get out there and start calling people. I said, I ain't calling nobody. They're going to call me. And they're like, man, look, man, you can't do traveling ministry without calling and asking people if you can come preach. And I said, well, God said, just pray and he'll make it happen. You know, both of them quit doing that shortly after that. And I'm still going and I'm still praying and my phone's still ringing and my phone's still going off because you got to understand the best earthly wisdom you can ever figure out is, is not near as good as, I mean, one syllable from the throne room, one word from God when God says, you're going to do what I've called you to do. I don't care what anybody says. No, you're not too young. No, you're not too old. No, it doesn't matter about your education. You are going to do it. The enemy is always on the offensive, so don't ever back up one moment from prayer. If you back up one moment from prayer, you're behind. You've got to stay in that place of prayer, and you better get some people around you that will help you pray. Why? Because you're protecting your voice. Without prayer, we are certain to be defeated in the day-to-day -day battle. I mean, this is an everyday thing. You've got to get up, and you've got to be aggressive over your family in prayer. Amen? Parents, be aggressive over those kids every single day. Every single day, spouses, man, your husbands over your wives, wives over your husbands. Even if you're single, pray for them like they were there because they're coming. You know, and you got to get ready. You got to get ready to pray because this is a time of breakthrough. This is a time that you're going to raise up people's voices. Uh, Martin Luther, man, I, I love that guy. He said, you know, if I fail to pray two hours in the morning, the devil will get the best part of me during the day. He knew the power of prayer. When you pray, man, the, the enemy can't shake you. William Grishaw said this. He was known as the apostle of Yorkshire. He said, I will rise at five in the morning in the winter and four in the morning in the summertime before we start our day because I know the power of prayer. I have got to pray. And you know, I remember one time I was working on a project and I, I cut back on my prayer time and the Lord spoke to me and said, you're, you're working on this project. But one hour of you in prayer, I can do more than you can do in 100 hours behind a computer. I need you in prayer. And then what you hear in prayer, take it out and accomplish something. This is why morning prayer is so good. David Brannard, he was a bad dude. He was a missionary to the American Indians. They said that when he died, he weighed 86 pounds. And, and the thing about him was that they said he didn't even have a decent meal. He was always eating like, like, like nuts and berries and different things. And he had a terminal illness, but he would not leave where he was at. And they said when he died in his little cottage, he, he said he had a little wood floor and there was a groove right beside his bed. They said he would sit there and he would walk and pray. And he wouldn't walk away from his bed because he was so weak and he would fall back down. And then he would get up and pray. And there was a groove beside his bed. And, and they said the Indian people would come bring him stuff. And they said when they would walk in, they could feel the tangible power and presence of God. His voice may have not been saying a whole lot, but they saw the way that he lived his life. I'm telling you, there is a season that God is looking to elevate somebody. And that somebody is the one found in the place of prayer. George Whitfield said, I've spent many days and up to even weeks prostrate on the ground in silence or in vocal prayer because he knows God is going to do something. And I'm always excited, but I'm like really, really excited right now. I just feel something is about to happen with Roar Church, Roar Network, and your life. Something is coming. Something is powerful. But you've got to get ready. You know, George Mueller was another guy that I love reading his stories. He fed orphans. For, let's check this out. For 70 years, he had 9,500 orphans. And they said he never asked for money. And he said not one orphan in 70 years ever missed one meal. He said there were days that he would be sitting there and he'd say, okay, God. And I love reading his stories. They said feeding time is in 10 minutes. And somebody would come in with all these sack lunches. Or people would come in and they would give something or they would do something. Or right at the last moment, something would came through. He says, 70 years of faith. And, and, and they asked his wife one time after his passing about your husband and, and all of these different crazy things about how he lived his crazy faith. And she said he never doubted. He never had fear. And for 70 years, no kid went hungry that was in our care. And, and usually we never had more than $100 in the bank. But because God always provides. 
always provide. I hope your faith is getting lifted today. Evan Roberts, he was just a, a, a young man in over the Welsh Revival, he went in and would pray in the secret place and say, God, use me, bend me till I break. And God broke out and, and, and radically changed a nation. But you know, they say the nation now is in worse shape than it was before the revival because the voice died. See, here's what happens. You can have a strong voice from God, but you got to keep it strong for years. And then you've got to raise people up. You've got to raise people. Oh, I still want to start an internship. It is strong in my spirit to raise up hundreds of young people. We're going to keep some, and we're going to send some. Because I want intercessors all over this region, because we're going to see a region change. I love the story about Charles Spurgeon, and I want to do this one day. One day they said, hey, Spurgeon, what is the secret of the great metropolitan tabernacle? He said, shh, listen. And they said, in the basement, you could hear the roar of the men and women that were interceding. He said, hear them? They're the secret. They're the secret. Because they're praying. While we're in here having church, there's people interceding for us. Samuel Chadwick, another bad dude. This man said this, a person that prays is irresistible to God. That's why the devil fights praying people so hard. I tell you, if you're in warfare, man, you're doing something right. Keep going. Because the devil puts obstacles in front of people that he's afraid of. He's basically afraid of everybody. You keep going. You keep going. We need men and women of God today who are ready to do great exploits. You know what that great exploit is? What's inside of you? Man, I'll tell you what, I've had, let me tell you the prophetic words I've had, not all of them. I've had prophetic words that we're going to minister live and on videos from, from numerous people within two years to over a million people a month. And we're well on our way. I hope you don't think this is it. And, and I've heard worship CDs, prayer CDs, raising hundreds of sons and daughters, launching, sending every week. I've had prophetic words. You're going to have preachers traveling all over America. You're going to be a place people call to get ministers constantly, constantly sent out from. That's what I want to do. Business people coming in, entrepreneurs launched out, that when people come here, they go and they grow and they learn from the things of God and they move forward in it. That is what it is. That is what it's about. And I hope that you understand that the reason you're here is because there's something great inside of you. Psalms 18. For you will light my lamp. Hang on for a second. I got a huge distraction. I got to wait. Sorry. Psalms 18. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Hang on, I'm getting frustrated. I'm sorry. Psalms 18. For you will light my lamp, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop, by my God I can leap over a wall. For as you, God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord, the Lord is the word is powerful. He is my shield to all who trust in him. And I'm telling you, this is the time that God is about to do something so powerful, so powerful in your life if you will let him. We pray this all the time. We preach this all the time. We see this all the time. I'm telling you, people every week are growing to new steps in new bounds, and taking ground in their family, taking ground in their business, taking ground in so many things. We've got to keep moving. We've got to keep going. And don't you dare stop. There are people, I've seen people going hard after the things of God, and the elevation from God is on their life, and then they stop and unplug. And they just kind of, it's like a balloon full of helium. When you let it go, it just kind of, and then it dies down. Don't ever let that be said of you. This is a moment in your life where you've got to move forward every day of your life. God has given you a breathtaking call and purpose and destiny, and you got to go for it. We're going to pray, and we're just going to, I'm going to pray. And then if you want prayer, I want to pray with you, because I believe that this is a moment where everything changes. Everything changes. 
changes in your life. Lord, I declare, I declare in the name of Jesus, no hindrance in here, Lord. Everybody's mind is focused on what you're saying. I pray over open heaven, over every single person. Every single person has an open heaven right now, God. A word straight from you. Lord, this is a moment that many people are going to have that yes in their spirit that is so strong and so powerful that they will never run away. They will never turn away, and they will never go back. Lord, I thank you for this moment. And God, I feel that there are some people here that this is a divine moment in their life. Reckless abandonment to fear and insecurity and the things that hold them back. But God, they will find that voice that they have, and they will move forward in it. Lord, I love you and I bless you. And I just give you glory for everything that you're doing, Lord. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to pray. If you want to stay there for a minute, that's fine. When you want prayer, you can come up. We're going to pray. But I think God is about to unlock some things. He's going to unlock some things in your life. This is a moment in your life where God is going to, he's going to speak to you. And I just keep hearing the Lord. You've got to entrust him with your future. And so many times, it's a, it's a big thing for people. They, they, wanna, they, wanna, they don't want to completely trust him with it. Entrust means it's to give it to him. So, Lord, I declare the word of the Lord over every person that is here. God, this is their time. Just like that young man said, God's going to give me Scotland, and a revival broke out. He will give you what he has put in your heart to pray and intercede for. Intercede for it, pray for it and then work towards it. So God, I give you glory, and I give you praise, and I say yes to every person here. Get that yes in your spirit.